Channel. Today we're starting the first part of our Brittany campaign as promised using uh, Warriors of God board game rules, a board game I'm sure many of you used to play, I used to play as a younger man, with some revisions and some omissions obviously. Uh, before we start the campaign and we go to the physical map, uh, let's uh, read a couple of things so you know uh, what's happening and you can follow the campaign easier. So we have here the French leaders timeline. Every leader uh, or number of leaders will enter in different initiative stages. Now one star leaders here at the top start with two units and they can be reinforced with one more during the game reaching three and one unit will always be the leaders unit and this will be man at arms. Uh, two star leaders start with three units and they can be reinforced with two during the game reaching five. One unit is always the leader, yeah, man at arms as we said, foot or mounted. The only leader who enters with his full army of five units is Guy II de Nesle, Constable of France in round three. And only two star leaders can recruit mounted knights and the mounted knights are specifically two for every faction. So they can recruit it again when the unit is destroyed. Now you can see here the entries and you can see here the very critical entry in the fourth or in the third round of the large French force and this is something the English need to take note. So in the first round the French will have four leaders there and the second round they will add two more, in the third round two more, in the fourth round two more and in the fifth round one. We have to note that the French have 11 nobles and the English have nine uh, because um, the English have more two-star leaders. Now let's go to the English. The English have uh, the same um, prerequisites for two and one star, but they don't start with the full army, like the French uh, constable does. And because they have more two-star leaders, they have uh, less commanders entering. So you can see here in the first round, the English enter with three commanders, the second round with two, uh, the third round with two, the fourth round with two, and the fifth round with one. The two star leaders for the English is here in the first round, Sir Thomas Walton. Uh, in the second round, Sir Thomas Duckworth. In the third round, Sir Hugh Calverley. And in the fourth round, uh, Sir Robert Knowles. Uh, under the units, under the, the faces, under the portraits, you can see the units that every commander has. And we said before they can be reinforced uh, from the uh, victory points uh, and army points they will be getting in every round. Now, obviously, the portraits are not the portraits of the nobles, but I thought it would make a nice, it would make an interesting game, uh, more role playing. Maybe viewers will get more attached to one commander and uh, don't like the other because of the portrait. So it's, I decided it uh, would be fun to have something like this. So let's go and see something else. So here is how we start the first round with uh, Sir Thomas Walton, Sir Robert Bamborough and Sir Walter Bentley for the English. They will start in the province of Nantes, uh, where it is going to be the Montfortist, let's say, home province. And uh, the first round for the French, we said they have four commanders, Sir Jean de Beaumois, uh, Raoul de Caours, Sir Oliver Arel and Sir Guy de Rochefort. They start in the Rennes province and there are four. Now if we, go to, if we zoom out a bit, and we can see uh, that in the left bottom location you have these uh, bars, these uh, prison bars. This is where the captured commanders will be taken to be ransomed or exchanged or left to rot. This is obviously decided by uh, every player. And here for a final note, we see we talked about the commanders and their entry point. And in the second round, uh, Sir Caron de Bodegas and Sir Robin Rajunel will come for the Blois faction, and Sir Richard Landale and Sir Thomas Duckworth will arrive for the Montfortis English factions. So, without any delay, let's go to the physical map and uh, start the game. I hope you will enjoy it. Okay, guys, let's start the campaign. We're placing the leaders now. We said we have from uh, the English Sir Thomas Walton here in black he's a two-star leader and that's why we have a shield uh, sir walter bentley and uh, we have also sir robert bambro so here are the three french leaders the three english leaders and from the french uh, we have four as we said sir jean de beaumonoir who's a two-star leader with a shield uh, sir oliver Arel, sir guy de rochefort and obviously the last one, uh, Raoul de Caus. So here are the French leaders. Uh, just a quick update. 
uh, these uh, provinces start under the control of uh, the two factions. Uh, the commanders um, need to move according to their borders, the, um, as per the terrain, and uh, they use actions by rolling dice to um, move impulses, as it was called in Warriors of God, in order to control an area, and you, it's quite simple. So let's roll for initiative, and roll two and three. Now, the English win the initiative, so they will get the French die, the two, and they will add another two, four, and the French will have three. So English have four initiatives, four impulses, and the French have three. And let's see how we're going to do. So the English obviously want to move to the center critical area. Uh, there is, from the uh, Bronau end to the Broven end, there are woods. That means, as per the rules, that two commanders only can cross uh, this border. So the English will keep the two-star leader, they will keep uh, the commander here to control, uh, to protect their, you know, main area. Uh, so Sir Thomas Walton will stay and Sir Walton Bentley and Sir Robert Bamborough will move with one initiative uh, to um, the area of Vance. So the English have three impulses remaining. The French will do the same thing but they will move all three. They have this ability because Rennes and uh, Dinan provinces um, are divided by a river uh, with a bridge. A river without a bridge allows only one, but a river with a bridge allows up to three, so that's a great advantage for the French, and they will move all their three commanders except their uh, two-star commander uh, to the area of, um, excuse me, of Dinan, or Pro Saint Malo, as it's called. Uh, so, Chazon de Beaumois, the two star leader, will stay in the home province, and Sir Oliver Rell, um, Sir Guy de Rochefort, and uh, Raoul de Caos will uh, move. So, two um, impulses for the French. Now, the English will use the next impulse, uh, and they will go to two to uh, control the area. It's uncontested, there is no opposing command, there is no control by another faction, so it can happen automatically. The French, obviously, uh, will do the same thing and uh, they will control the area of Bros and Melo. Two impulses for the English and one for the French. The problem with the English now in the first round is they have three commanders and they don't want to overextend. Now they're not worried because uh, the two provinces here are divided by a river and that means that only one French commander. These things you should think when you're doing strategy and moving your commanders. The, result, the river do, allows only one commander for the French to cross, and that means that even if they keep one commander, sorry, I moved the two-star leader, my mistake, um, it won't be a large force coming. So the English will use the next impulse, so they will go to one uh, to move the commander to Cornwallis. The French will do the same thing, having more commanders, having this luxury, and they will move to Penthivre with the next and final impulse. Uh, the division is woods, so the woods allow two commanders. Again, the French have the same strategy. They know that if the English want to cross, although the English are overextended, there is a river here that will, will allow only one noble to cross, so the French will move with the two commanders here in Pethivre. So the impulse is a finish for the French. The English have one more, so they will make Coronelli, they will control it. So now in this situation we have um, that the English control the south part of Brittany and they control three areas. The French, although more commanders, they control only two areas. They haven't had enough impulses to uh, take Penthevere under their control. So we have here three, four, five, six, seven victory points for the English and uh, three, four, five victory points for the French. Uh, this obviously denotes also as army points, but not for the French. The French uh, will have six army points because they get one army point from France. The French, excuse me, the, the Blois faction gets one army point from France in every round. So the French, although have five victory points, uh, they will get six army points. Now, first round is finished. We didn't have any melee. Um, I hope you understood how things work. And... Uh, uh, we'll go now to the second round and we'll roll again for initiative to see who will get the impulses and we'll roll and it's six and a four. Again, the English win. The English will get six impulses. The French will get five impulses. And let's see how this will work. I think things are getting quite interesting. Now for the next round, I'm not going to tell you the commanders all the time, but for the, during battle probably, for the next round, the French will have Sir Caron de Bostegas and Sir Robin Ragunel, Ragunel who will join. Now the French have the option, well, and the English will have, let me tell you for the English as well, the English have Sir Thomas Duckworth and Sir Richard Landale. Now the English 
and, and the French, well, the Blois and the Montfort, has an option to put, uh, to place their commanders in any area they control. So the English will probably do, they will put Sir Thomas um, Dugworth, who is a two-star leader, that's why he has a shield, they will put him here in Cornwallis. Why? Um, the borders around Cornwallis uh, 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 against, you know, the opposing faction are uh, woods, uh, not woods, are um, hills um, that allow two opponents to cross, two commanders. So it could be... Um, a possible invasion, so we need to be strong in Cornwallis. Um, the other commander for the English, Sir Richard Landale, um, I will put in the very critical Provenet province. Um, it's a very important province for the English. It's connecting to all their, um, let's say, gains. So this is the location I'll put. Now the French have another two commanders also for phase for round two, and is as we said, Sir Rondek Bodegas and Sir Robin Rajunel. Um, the French will do the same thing. Probably I will put them in Penthevre, one and the other one I will place here in Bros Saint Melo. Why? My strategy is to go back and get the small province of Dole that gives uh, one victory point and one army point, but it's very difficult to get contested. It's north, it's isolated, and it's uh, protected by the existing French um, uh, provinces. So let's go. Do you want to go, go a bit closer? So let's see how this will work. Now the French, the English have one impulse, and what they're going to do so the English decide with Sir Thomas Duckworth for one impulse to cross to the province of Lyon that gives uh, one victory point. It's a woods dividing, so two could move, but uh, in province of Lyon. Um, and um, this is one impulse for the English and for the French. The French will probably, yes, move. Now that's, you see the problem for the French. The French have a river here for Tregor. Uh, Tregor so allows only one noble with his army to cross, to enter. Then Tregor is quite vulnerable from the English. So Thomas Duckworth has a river with a bridge to cross, so that will allow him easily to cross or more, if more English units, um, nobles arrive. And the, the hill also allows to. So it's a very... It's, it's a difficult area to access from the French province, but an easy area to access from the English gains. But the French need the. But the French will do something else. We'll go to Dole. It's an easy province, uncontested, uh, so they can get a victory point, and uh, they will go here to four. Now we'll go back to the English. They will use one initiative. They will go to four, and they will make uh, Lyon their own province. So another um, province for the Montfortis, uh, and the French in Dole will use their victory point, uh, their, their impulses, and they will go to three, and uh, they will control the small province of Dole, saint Melo, that gives them uh, one victory point. Now, what more we can do, what the English can do? Now, this area here, Trugo, it's uncontested. Um, nobody wants to uh, attack at the moment, although there are quite a lot of victory points. Um, especially the French, who although have commanders, um, they, they know that only one can cross. Um, but I think the English are not, at the moment, looking very threatening. So I think, um, I think the French, with uh, Sir Oliver Arell, will move here with for, uh, one more uh, initiative um, impulse. And... Um, I don't think the English want to do anything else. The French, they will use another impulse to control the area. And I think the English, at the moment, they don't want to overextend you. They're quite extended. So um, this second round is finished very quickly. And the French are controlling now uh, the north totally, with the English controlling the south and Lyon. So it's quite, quite a balanced situation. Let's go and see the victory points and the army points. The English have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be added to the previous one. So the English have currently 15, 15 victory points and the French will add um, three for, uh, for Nantes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten um, victory points plus uh, one for army points. So 10 victory points, 11 army points. So we currently are 15 and 15. How the battle works, I mean the timeline, um, I will do um, 12 
rounds. Uh, every round is three months, and that will be 36 months, the whole game, three years, basically. And uh, at the end, we will see, at the first part of this campaign, we will see, uh, we, don't, we will count the difference between victory points, and uh, we'll see who will be the winner. So we finish the second round with English having 15 victory points and the French 15 victory points. And now this is the next round. I think this round will be very, very critical because the French are coming. And the French with a large army, as I said, Guy de Nestle, the constable of France, who is arriving, and we have to see where we're going to place him. I want to be aggressive. I think the French are going to place him here in Trugot. And um, I, I think things will be looking well, dangerous for the English, they have to be very careful. Then Sir Robin Raguanel is coming, uh, who will probably, I will place him as a French uh, to Penthivre here. The French are piling up the forces, or maybe here as well. Should I put him here so we can attack? Um, let's put him here. Now for the English, uh, the other two commanders who are arriving in this uh, third is obviously very good, uh, very good for the English, Sir Thomas, uh, Sir, um, who coming? Sir Hugh Calverley, a two-star leader. So let's see Sir Hugh Calverley. So this is Sir Hugh Calverley, excuse me, this is Sir Thomas, oh, Sir Hugh Calverley is here. So Sir Hugh Calverley, who I need to protect this location here, Cornwall Lee. So Hugh Calverley will join here. And uh, Sir Harve uh, Laxon-Lang, uh, who is a one-star leader, and I will place him. The French are piling up here. This is dangerous. The, the French can attack any of these locations with these three units. Now, if they want to attack Cornwallis, let's zoom in and see the strategy of the French. Now, I need to see where I will place the English, because the French, now the French constable has arrived, can attack in Cornwallis with two nobles, two armies, and they can attack Lyon with three armies. And um, Lyon is a one, and Cornwallis is two level. Um, probably, I don't want to lose Thomas Duckworth. I don't want to lose Duckworth. I need to put the English commander, I need to put Sir Havre Laxolan here, because if they're attacked, uh, I don't want to be Duckworth on his own. I must have support here. You have also Calvary, and... Um, you have also Sir Walter, uh, Sir uh, Robert Bambara, so I think uh, I will put, I will place them here. So let's roll for initiative. This is critical. We have a battle for sure. So five and four. So the French win the initiative. They will go at six. They will get the English four and then at two, and the English will go at a five. So let's see now where are we going to go off with this. Now, if I was a general for the French, I would have sure attacked uh, Lyon. There is. Um, Sir Thomas Duckworth is here, a great English commander. I can capture him. I can, I can kill him, maybe. I have the option to attack because, as you can see here, the, the division is a river uh, with the bridge, and uh, it's a great opportunity to remove a commander. The area may not be that, that you know, fertile and uh, important with a one star, with a one, level one, but Duckworth is, and it would be good thing to remove one English two-star leader. So immediately the French attack, we put uh, an aggression marker here so we know that there are the aggressors and the French can cross three commanders with a bridge. Oh, that will be a mess now. One, two, three commanders with a bridge to become the aggressors. Now the French are three commanders and the English are two commanders. Uh, the French now would have been able to remove the English control marker if they have one more commander but you need to know that the control marker is considered a commander in these situations you consider that the populace and the militia are with the English because they are under their control so it's three and three they cannot move uh, the control marker of the English and nobody if you change your mind if this stalemate is like this no commander can move so the English are stuck the French are stuck here so the, Engl the French use one impulse to go five now the English can they become aggressive and attack here I think they can. Sir Thomas Calverley, Sir Hugh Calverley, will move and go to Trigo for one initiative, and they will go at four. He's a two-star leader. That was a good strategy from the English, and in the next initiative, he can um, change the control. Now, the issue is that the French here, as I'm telling you, the two commanders in the Pethivre location cannot attack 
the English, both of them, because they divided by a river. That's why I'm telling you it's very important that it will be only one commander. Both are one-star leaders. So Hugh Calvary, he's a two-star leader. They will have a big disadvantage. He has veteran troops. He can have mounted if he wants, but he has more troops. So they would not risk it. I think the French will attack in this location as they attack with the, with the, well, the, the Blois, with the French constable who arrived, and they will keep the status quo, and they will not attack. I don't think the French will move anybody at all. Um, it's very risky, and let me show you why. All the remaining locations are divided by a river, so even if they want to remove to move from Dinan, from Bro San Melo, um, only one leader can cross, so they will be outnumbered. Here, of course, is a stalemate. Here from Pethever, they can move two leaders, but they will leave so they can uh, match the English strength here in uh, the center, but they will leave um, Pethever um, totally undefended. The French will not do anything else. So the English will do one more impulse, and they will change this um, to English. The very interesting things are happening. So, so the English took advantage of the full force of the French attacking Sir Thomas Duckworth and Sir Hugh Calvary moved to the Trigore area and, uh, and, and changed their, their allegiance to English, so English uh, Montfortus. Um, but now we have to fight the battle that we don't have any other uh, impulses uh, by the players. So let's see what's going to happen. This is a very critical battle. And why it's a critical battle? It's a critical battle because you have some great commanders. You have a two-star leader for the English, uh, Sir Thomas Duckworth. Uh, you have uh, the French constable and uh, two uh, French nobles. So it's going to be a great, great battle um, here. We're going to have probably prisoners or deaths with this battle, and maybe the balance will uh, change. So you see how quickly battles are generated here in this battle and how interesting the rules work. So let us go to the battlefield. So hi guys, we're joining the battle after a couple of initiatives. I didn't want to bore you with the initial movement. The terrain is, uh, is decided by the defenders uh, and we keep the, the theme of the borders, uh, wooded areas and rivers. Now the English have two nobles. The first noble is Sir Thomas Duckworth, who is a two-star leader. He's company these three units, a unit of veteran foot, that is a retinue unit, a unit of Welsh archers, very powerful, and a unit of Britain veteran foot. Uh, sir... Um, Harvard Luxelan, who is a one-star leader, and he's a knight banneret. He has one unit of men at arms, which is his basically retinue, and a unit of English archers. Um, obviously, Thomas Duckworth being a two-star leader, uh, he's a noble. For the French side, uh, one, two, three, four, as we said, and five, the mounted knights. Uh, we said the army is complete. Um, it's a veteran uh, mounted knights uh, that are and the command... Um, unit of, um, of Guy II de Nestle, the Constable of France. Uh, then we have uh, French heavy crossbows, veteran men-at-arms, uh, then you have veteran French foot, and then you have just French foot where it's crossing uh, the bridge. The other two um, companies, one is under Sir Yves Charuel, who has a unit of men-at-arms, that's his retinue unit, and a unit of uh, Britain foot, normal Britain foot. And the third commander uh, is for the French, Sir Oliver Arel here, his uh, retinue unit is here, and he has also one retinue Britain foot. So the English seem to be quite um, overpowered, uh, but you can see from the deployment that the French don't have a lot of missile units. Okay, the English have two, and they have the Welsh archers who are very powerful, but the French are only the crossbowmen, so could be and could be a chance for the English being in a defensive position, being behind soft cover, getting minus one uh, for their opponents in defense, um, could, could, could manage to defend. We'll see, we'll see. This is a very critical battle. The French, obviously, constable is changing the balance of power. So, guys, uh, we continue with the battle. Uh, we did a couple of more uh, initiatives. I didn't want to bore you with the mechanics. We're going to go into more critical now. Things are looking quite interesting. So let's start focusing a bit and see what's happening in the French crossing. Um, they were shot by the English. Uh, the English managed to successfully uh, reduce um, or kill some French and reduce the unit's uh, strength. But uh, still the French, as we said from the beginning, they have overwhelming numbers at the crossing the river. So here in the English left flank, uh, the French are crossing. They are not at all challenged by the English. They are extending their flanks. They have no casualties. There is a unit of uh, Breton foot 
and the retinue units of the French noble who are crossing now without any hindrance and that could be a problem. They have a delay obviously of minus one from this difficult ground but in general the French are doing well here and are totally unopposed. Now the French center here under um, the commander Sharif Chart Sharif Charwell, his uh, Breton infantry was pushed back, was fatigued, uh, they managed to rally, but they have four casualties. As you can see here, they were pushed back again behind the river from an excellent shooting from the longbowmen. But as you can see, this retinue of men at arms, the retinue of the noble, uh, has managed to reach and charge the English longbowmen who shot them. Uh, they tried to shoot them. Uh, uh, while they were charging, they were not pushed back. It was not a very good successful shooting. Uh, they, in for, they inflicted one casualty, uh, but the English now are in hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, with the French men-at-arms. So here things are a bit more controlled by the English, although now this hand-to-hand -hand combat will be critical and probably we have to show it. Uh, here on the left flank under the Constable of France, um, you can see that um, his veteran French crossing the river, they were shot by the English here. Let me zoom in, zoom out a bit. So they were shot by the English here. They have one casualty, they have two fatigues, so um, they have to rally. But the men at arms beside it, the veteran men at arms, um, are moving without any hindrance at all. Also here, the foot of the French is moving, crossing the bridge without any problems. So another difficult for the English situation to handle. Uh, the French are crossing, are moving in, and the English are less. In the back, where we have uh, the Constable of France, his command unit is the back waiting, and the crossman fatigued by uh, getting shot from the longbowman didn't actually play a lot of part in the battle yet. Um, they're crossing the river fatigued, so we are in a situation where we need to fight this hand-to-hand -hand combat here. So this hand-to-hand -hand combat is very critical, and um, let's uh, roll. The French men at arms are attacking with uh, six dice, but because they have one casualty, from the English, they will attack with five dice. So let's roll uh, five dice and see. So five dice for the French that um, they will require as being veteran at arms. They need a plus a five. They have the powerful one that doesn't um, affect, obviously, because the English don't have um, very good armor. So let's see. Uh, the, veterans sh the veterans need um, a plus five to hit the English, but they have five dice. They don't have six dice. So let's see how this will work. So let's roll for the French, and the French men at arms uh, have five dice because they have one casualty from the shooting uh, of the English, um, the defensive reaction, and uh, they need a, a six, no, they need a five, so they roll a seven, a seven, and zero, and a zero. So four possible hits. Now the English have to defend. The English, because we are behind soft cover, they get a minus one uh, defense bonus, let's say. So uh, the English archers have... Uh, a defense bonus of a defense uh, roll in melee of seven, so they will need six. So they roll and they roll one, two, so two hits against the English who have to roll now for resolve. The resolve is six, so six, a zero, they pass, and four, and they become uh, fatigued. So the English um, will get two hits and become fatigued, uh, they're not going to be pushed back. Uh, they're lucky with a soft cover, uh, but um, they're in trouble. So the English veteran archers have uh, two casualties and they have two fatigue points. That means minus one action. Uh, the French attacked, but they didn't manage to break through. So this is the situation currently. We're going to play a couple of rounds and see what's going to happen and see how the French are going to react. So let's see, guys. Things are getting quite interesting. The English are still holding, but they're getting overwhelmed. Uh, from uh, the left flank, uh, the French are uh, closing um, the noose. The English decided here, let's see what the English did. The English decided here not to wait for the flank attack. They charged and they pushed back. Well, they didn't push back, but they uh, created many, they, they enforced many casualties. They inflicted many casualties to the Franks, basically seven. So this French unit. Uh, the attacks Britain foot is uh, almost destroyed. We have to check it with two fatigue points. Here, the French are outflanking the English. Obviously, the English um, infantry here, veteran, 
is, well, the Montfortist has uh, left its position and it's ready to destroy this uh, Breton foot. But there is a unit of, vet, of foot men at arms and a unit of uh, Britonian, uh, Briton infantry that are closing the gap and are closing from the flanks. From the other side of the battlefield, things are getting interesting too. The English are holding because of these defences. Uh, they have two casualties and two fatigue points. The French have one casualty, no fatigue. Um, so obviously the French men at arms will get the upper hand of the English longbowmen who don't have a support because obviously the English have uh, less uh, units. On the other hand here, the English decided to charge. Uh, the French uh, veteran foot. They haven't successful. I mean, they, they removed five miniatures. They have five casualties. The English have two casualties and a fatigue. The French have two fatigues, but two fatigue points. But again, it was not a, cr a, a critical attack. It was not a, a decisive attack. The French men at arms here, veteran men at arms, are crossing. Probably they're going to be shot by the longbow in the next round. And uh, obviously in the next round they will charge attack them so the longbows have maybe uh, maybe this is the last chance to do an arrow storm um, this veteran welsh longbowman didn't manage to do an arrow storm and in the bridge the english decided to attack the french foot and uh, block them uh, it's a balanced hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat the, the english are fatigued and have one casualty the french are double fatigued but they have uh, one casualty also so it's quite a balanced situation i don't know how things are going i mean in the next round i think things will be more visible and we'll understand more what's happening and in the next uh, round i will decide if the english will uh, try to escape will try to um, leave uh, the battlefield because currently we have to fight this critical hand-to-hand -hand combat um, with the french and um, if the English longbowmen are pushed back or um, they are um, destroyed, then there is, the English will be totally overwhelmed from the left. You see here, the French are moving, are sweeping across with no, nobody to oppose them. So I think this is a very critical hand-to-hand -hand combat that we need to fight um, and see who will get the initiative. The initiative uh, is first to have the English, the English have four of diamonds and the French have five of, of, of spades. So that means the French have precedence with the five of spades. That's I'm telling you, it's very critical. A veteran unit. This is, this is um, a one star leader. So he's not a veteran unit, but a veteran a unit gets, um, a trained unit gets one action. So the French uh, will attack the English and think it's time to fight this. This will be interesting. So the French men at arms get um, six dice, but because they have one casualty, they have five dice. They hit with a plus six because they're men at arms. And let's see now uh, what's going to happen. So this critical melee, the French hit with a plus six, so they have an eight and a seven and the other three are not successful so the english will defend the, the english archers have a defense uh, from hand -hand combat of seven so let's see if they can be able to roll seven but but, but because they're behind hedge they have a minus one so they need to roll a six so they roll a seven and a one so uh, only one hit against the english the mod focus who will roll for resolve and they fail both both resolves are failed. Now the English still have um, a favor. They're going to use it. They have three favors. They're going to use it to reroll because this would have been a disaster. So they roll again. And it's a one and a two. It's terrible. It's two fatigue points. Two fatigue points. That means that they have already two fatigue points. So the English become shaken. They go to four fatigue points. And um, they have also one more casualty. So let's see. This looks very difficult for the English currently. So the English get more, one more casualty, they go to three. And they get another two fatigue points. So they become shaken with four fatigue points. And they cannot fight back and they will be pushed back four inches. So the English are pushed back, shaken. Uh, the French, I don't think they will follow. I don't think they will, they will follow because they have, these are flanking coming here and um, I don't think they will follow they will do one inch if they want and to cross here and um, so the French are not following but they're breaking the English lines it's a big problem it's a very big problem 
the next initiative will show us what will happen, and the initiative goes um, to the French again, to the English, excuse me. And let me continue, and I will come back to you. So, okay, guys, the battle continues. Um, this is the next morning. It takes time to shoot these videos, but let's see what the campaign is going on. I think sometimes natural light is better. Um, I don't know. You'll tell me. So, what happened is that the English had their breakthrough. And let's go and see. Um, the English veteran foot, the Briton veteran foot, and uh, the Montfortists broke the Briton, the Briton normal foot. And uh, now it will be removed from the game. I left it here so you can see it. Um, obviously, it's attacked from the flanks by another Briton foot, but uh, um, and now also you can see that um, the Constable of France is uh, joining the battle, charging. So we have to see how this battle will develop. But the English managed a breakthrough, removing um, the already uh, fatigued um, unit of uh, Briton foot uh, under um, the Blois faction. Another. Another breakthrough for the English here, the English longbowmen shot with their um, arrow storm and they broke the French veteran men at arms. Uh, they uh, shot them, uh, they shaked them and their, uh, their fatigue value went to seven, meaning that they broke automatically. So you two, two, unit, your two units are broken by the English and um, um, Obviously, still the English are under pressure because the French have more units. If you go back and we'll see, obviously there's two units of uh, foot, uh, the nobles of the French nobles who are here, who are charging the English longbowmen here, and uh, um, obviously the constable of France was joining the battle. But uh, we'll see. I will probably see one next round, and I will probably. Um, uh, withdraw the English uh, with a chance obviously of losing some commanders, but I don't want to lose my armies I don't want the armies to be annihilated um, If we withdraw the armies stay the same uh, If we fight all the battle uh, and we lose uh, we probably um, The armies will be annihilated or we'll be reduced uh, very uh, to very small numbers So let me see uh, the next round what's gonna happen and I'll get back to you Okay, I stopped here because I want to show you this. This is a critical attack. The attack we have from the Constable of France to the English, uh, well, the English veteran foot who are fighting for the Montfortis. Uh, this is a critical attack and we need to see it. Now, uh, the mounted foot, mounted knights uh, have the heavy cavalry charge. That means that they uh, give a minus two penalty to the saves from the opponent. So that would be quite critical. So let's see uh, the, back, the charge. So the mounted men at arms uh, attack their veteran and they have experience level veteran and they attack with a five. So we need to roll fives with the six, six dice. They roll five and a six, only two hits. Uh, and uh, the French now, they cannot defend. Now, mounted attacks by heavy cavalry cannot, uh, for infantry, it's not possible to fight back. So we have to show, uh, roll for a defense only for the veteran foot and the veteran foot uh, of the English has a defensive value of six. So minus two, they need an eight. And they roll a nine and an eight. That's incredible for the English. And um, they defend both, but they have to take a resolve test regardless. And they roll a seven, the resolve is six. And this is incredible. The English held the charge. Um, actually, I forgot that because the English have Bills, the French get a minus one on their attack. This is the pole arms rule. Excuse me, uh, they get a plus one. Excuse me, plus one target, but that doesn't matter because there were no, um, there were no, nothing happened. So actually, a, a charge, a glorious charge that totally failed for the French. Here we have a great battle between Sir Thomas Duckworth and uh, the veteran men at arms of. Uh, um, the French, well, actually, their veteran foot, Brit Britain veteran foot of uh, the Constable of France, who is currently attacking, and um, uh, Guy the Second and Esle. So, so we'll continue this massacre 
the English longbowman, although weaker than the Welsh longbowman, broke the French heavy crossbowman and removed them from the battlefield. Um, the English or Britain heavy uh, veteran foot fought back without inflicting any wounds uh, to the mounted knights of uh, the Constable of France. Uh, the problem here now is the English uh, flanks or the English rear. Well, unfortunately, the English longbowmen are basically out, the Welsh longbowmen are basically out, uh, the retinue of men-at-arms under the command of um, Sir Oliver Orell is destroying the Welsh longbowmen and he will be able to return and attack the English on the back. Um, here, the hand-to-hand combat, let's go here. Sir Thomas Duckworth is still fighting, but didn't inflict much to uh, the French, uh, well, the Breton veteran foot. And here in the battlefield, in the battle for the bridge, things are balanced. So uh, it seems that the English did well. They, redu they removed a lot of uh, units for the French, uh, but they uh, are in trouble. Um, okay, guys, I think it's time for the English to withdraw. The French foot pushed back the English uh, and um, uh, Sh making them shaken. Uh, the English longbows here on the left broke. Um, uh, in general, the English handled the, 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 the battle well, but it's an overwhelming numbers. The numbers of the Constable of France really played a very important part in this, although the English fought well. Uh, they couldn't handle it. So let's see a little bit more closer. So here in the center, the English are still fighting, and here on, um, on the left flanks, but you can see here that they are uh, um, flanked, they're attacked by the Gascon uh, infantry and by the Constable of France. Uh, I don't know how much they will be able to hold here in this position. Uh, it's quite difficult. Uh, here on the other hand, the English, the, the English archers did an excellent job pushing back uh, the French uh, men-at-arms, shaking them, but here also this unit is uh, free that broke the Welsh men-at-arms. The English men-at-arms here are shaken, so it seems that uh, the situation is quite difficult for the English. It's better for me not to lose my commanders and withdraw from the battlefield. I mean, the province is lost by the English, obviously, but time now it's time to save the army and it's time to save the nobles. If we lose... Um, Sir so Thomas Duckworth, a two-star leader, that will be a problem for the whole English campaign. So um, uh, let's see, the, the French constable really changed um, the balance of power with the complete five-unit army that um, uh, he had coming from France. So if we see a bit better, so you see, here you see the English are basically outnumbered, they are flanked uh, from both sides by uh, Breton uh, infantry. Uh, under the Blois faction and uh, the Constable of France. Here the English are fighting, they're doing well, but still it's the only position they're doing well. Uh, here on the bridge they were pushed back and become, became shaken from the French infantry who doesn't have a lot of casualties. The longbowman did well, uh, pushed back uh, and uh, uh, nullified the attack, making them shaken of men-at-arms, but here this unit of French men-at-arms that destroyed the Welsh longbowman is ready to attack from the rear. I think the English won't have a lot of chances. Now this uh, unit of men at arms is shaken. This will be fighting on its own. Um, here I think the, 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 the English, well the Breton um, veteran foot under the Montfortis flag, I don't think they're gonna hold for much longer. Um, considering that their opponents are hardly um, injured. Obviously, this unit that uh, is shaken, it will be removed. But in general, I think the English should withdraw uh, from the battlefield now so we can save... Um, I don't know, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I think we should withdraw. I mean, it's a close. It's not bad, it's close. But um, I think that uh, it would be better to give a chance to the English to save the commanders. Okay, guys, the battle is over, so the English elected to flee. Now, for uh, a, an army to flee, both commanders have to flee in the same location and have to flee in uh, friendly areas or uncontested areas. So the English have the advantage of fleeing either in Trigor, that um, Sir Hugh Cavalry managed to change and uh, made it English-influenced, uh, 
or in Cornwallis, where they have also um, uh, the area under the English o- uh, occupation. In order to flee, you must uh, abide by the borders rules. So if two commanders can enter a province through a specific type of terrain, so for example here it's two commanders because we have a woods, or three commanders here, as you know, that's how the French attack, because we have a river and a bridge, the same, will have, the same number can cross while fleeing. So what's the procedure of fleeing? So we take the stars of every opponent, when we have two one-star leaders for the French and a two-star leader, so we have four, and plus um, the control of the area, but the control of the area is not French, is English. So we have one, two, three, four, and uh, with the French roll four dice, and with the sixes, um, the one of the commanders are captured. Uh, if um, they don't roll sixes, the commanders manage to flee. So let's roll and see again, as I said, two, three, four star leaders. If the area, four stars, leaders. If the area was controlled by the French, it would have been five. But uh, let's roll and see. Four, they need six is the French. The, we, the English need to avoid it. Oh, and we have one six. And we have one six. Six, five, five, four, one. So this means that one commander is captured. Always captured. You capture the the highest commander last because he's the last to to stay alive even in the battle he's the last to die so uh, the french capture uh, the french capture the one star commander the english commander sir harvlock salan he's captured he's going to prison but uh, sir, Reg- well, sir thomas Duckworth manages to escape with his army so Laksana's come to a one-star leader. It's a gr- big blow for the English, considering that they have uh, less leaders regardless. Um, and obviously the area in the next impulse, in the next round, should will be changed. So let's see the situation. Uh, the English managed to, um, with uh, Sir Hugh Cavalry, to enter the Trigore area that it was unprotected and change it, change its allegiance to the Montfortis. They're controlling a larger area than the French. They broke the connection between Penthivre and um, Lyon. So this is an issue here for the French. Um, they're a bit isolated here, although they have a lot of the units. Uh, but again, they have less units. Now their commander, the noble, is captured. They have to try and um, um, exchange him either with the province that costs the same with the noble. They don't have a one-level one province, so they have to give a two-level. Uh, um, well, the control, and or they have to capture a French commander of the same level and uh, or higher level and exchange him. Otherwise, um, the English uh, noble uh, Sir Havelock Solan will stay in prison and rot. So let's go into the actual um, digital map before and um, let's um, uh, see it a bit better. So guys, let's see the situation currently. It's easier to see it in the digital map. Currently, Sir Le Havre Laxalian is captured in the uh, Blois prison, and we'll see what the English will do about it. Now, the situation is the English are controlling uh, more areas, well, the same number of areas, but you see they're quite extended. They don't have enough commanders. They have less commanders than the French, who haven't lost anyone yet. They had one more anyway. Um, now, in the third or fourth round, um, Sir Robert Knowles, a two-star leader, is coming, and Oliver de Glisson, a one-star leader, but Sir Robert Knowles is really, really required. I think Sir Robert Knowles will go in the area of um, uh, Sir Thomas Duckworth, uh, Cornwallis. They have to protect, to protect it. They need to support also. I think the two-star leaders of the English should go to the borders and try to take back areas, and Oliver de Glisson probably will control, will be placed in an area in the center. From the French, another two leaders are coming. They're piling up the pressure, Sir Jean Ruxelot and Sir Geoffrey Debois. They're both one-star leaders. Obviously, they will pile up the numbers, the French, but the English need to go to the, uh, to become more aggressive. Uh, the presence of uh, Guy de Nestle of France, the constable with the full army, is currently creating an uh, imbalance of power. But I think with Sir Robert Knowles, Sir Thomas Duckworth and Sir Hugh Cavalry, all present, um, things may change. Anyway, guys, this is from me. I hope you enjoyed the first part of the campaign. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time. I hope you enjoyed the rules. I hope you enjoyed the battle. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.